Hello, everybody. Welcome on behalf of Food Lovers Market. It's lovely to have you all along. It's 12 o'clock. Uh, nice to see some familiar faces from the previous session that we just had. Lekka, welcome back. I hope you spent your 15 minutes between sessions, maybe getting a bit of a refill. I don't know what to do when the, once the bottle's done. I'm just going to move on to the next bottle and the next bottle. Um, I really hope that there's, uh, there's, 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 there's going to be enough to give me through today. But uh, let's have everyone on, on, on board with us. It has been um, an incredible day so far. And we're in for an absolute treat with the very best in fresh food lovers market. And it's been a tough year for a lot of people. And we just hope that um, in some way or other, these festive workshops uh, kind of uh, emphasize the importance of this time that we spend together with our loved ones. Using simple everyday ingredients to create a festive feast. Each of these workshops are meant to inspire like that creative spark within us to kind of lead that festive table. Uh, so we've really put together an amazing program. Now, Food uh, Lovers Market obviously offers a harvest of fresh ideas and inspiration in, in its stores. Pop on by, there's some amazing festive specials. Literally every link, the thing that you see in these workshops are available from Food Lovers Market. Every bit of the ingredients, the previous session, every bit of the ingredients from this session as well. There's no, kind of a no house rules. We're here to have a good time. You've got your, your, your Santa's little packs and by now you've tucked into them. My, um, I had to try and keep them back. I've got two little kids at home. They thought it was Christmas early when they opened up Santa's pack. So hopefully you still got some of those snacks to get you through a couple of the sessions. But I, I mentioned we're in for an amazing treat. Um, if at any stage you've got questions, feel free uh, to ask those questions. You can either raise your hand, you can put your microphone on, uh, feel free to interact with us. If you are um, the, the, the type that doesn't want to interrupt, you can feel free to put your questions into the comment section and we'll, um, and we'll ask our chefs during the course of the, of the next uh, 45 minutes any of your questions as well. Uh, we are in for an absolute treat. Today, Irida and Dalian on social media at Hayes Cook and they look the part. It looks amazing. I can almost smell what you've got in your kitchen today. So ladies and gents, Irida the toy and her friend Dalian in the kitchen, thank you so much. Uh, take it away, the, the, the two of you. Welcome to my kitchen and, and food lovers market. Thank you so much for this great initiative because we are baking buddies. Delian and I, we've been lifelong friends. And every year, it is, over the years, it become a tradition for me to show off my Pavlova skills and every year at, at a different variation. So I'm the Pavlova princess, but Delian is the cookie queen. And every year I get this most amazing gift, and that is a cookie Christmas tree that she and she makes it in my home and sets it up on my table. So, uh, and then of course I don't tell my guests I didn't make it, but so today we're going to share those secrets. Now, when it comes to pavlova, I know or, or meringue, so many people your eyes glaze over because it seems to be such a chefy, or you have to be a French patissier to do it. And it's really the easiest thing. So what I'm going to do is to just show you a few pitfalls and how to prevent them. And it's one of those very economical dishes to make, cost hardly anything, but it packs a punch in terms of um, how it impresses people and it's really a wild well thing to have on your table. So, and I got all the ingredients we got at our um, local food lovers market. So, don't even despair if you feel already you plan you're not going to, to, to do that for Christmas Day. Fruit Lovers Market have ready made meringue cases. Um, I, I don't know whether they are as festive as my wreath. Mm -hmm. um, really cool, let really me show you. These are the, uh, the wreaths that we're going to make today. Okay. <coughs> Now it's basically the two ingredients, eggs and caster sugar. So you, and, and you know, one of all those things that people mark your suet bomb, there's really nothing to it, is to separate the, 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 the yolk and the white. Start with make life easier for you and use very fresh eggs because the whites of the eggs are firmer when the eggs are fresh. So it's, it, 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 you don't have those accidents of the yolk um, dripping and the yolk breaking and the, the egg white being too liquid. Okay, so you, you need six eggs, but 
ideally sometimes it's six and sometimes it might be seven depending on the size of the eggs because at the end you want nearly a cup of egg white and also another trick is to is to do in uh, room temperature will, yes but i will also just in case some egg uh, I will put one yeah. after each uh, egg white. I will put it in the bowl, uh, in the jug, so to make sure that you don't. Yeah. Um, um, that looks alright. Yeah, the this is about two twenty-five, yeah. and also room temperature. The colder your the egg, the egg white, the harder it is to whip in the the air that you want. So room temperature, and you would need it round right about if you keep it in the fridge. Although there's no reason to keep eggs in the fridge. Um, take it out at least an hour before the time. So my, the other man in my life, the other one is sitting there behind me, the technology, the other man in my life is Ken Wood. My Ken Wood. I'm going to, to, to speak up. The idea is that when you start whipping, firstly, I'm sorry, I should have said this beforehand, is ensure that the bowl, that everything that you're going to use, where that touches the egg white, that it is totally grease free. So even if you want to make double sure, you always use either glass or china or stainless steel. Plastic. It gives the idea that it is grease free, but it actually those um, grease particles go right into the plastic. And then you won't whip up the volume that, that you want to. Okay. So I start off fairly slow, just for 30 seconds or so, because the smaller the egg, uh, the, the, the bubbles, the more air they're going to eventually uh, uh, capture. So now it's full throttle and only whip until it's, it's, it forms those stiff peaks and not too far. I, guess I, I hope it's not too, too noisy. Uh, so that is, it takes about a minute and a half to get to that stiff peaks. So go. Let me talk to you about the sugar. Use cast the sugar, white cast the sugar, because the very granule coarse sugar tends to take very long to dissolve. And if the sugar is not dissolved, you will find that the meringue, once it's baked, start forming tears. It seeps out little um, caramel like droplets. That just, it's, it's not a, a huge mistake, but ideally you would want the perfect variety. Okay, now you start off, oh my goodness, uh, a, a heap spoon at a time. I'm going to rush it a bit now and use two spoons. Then before you add the next spoon, you Beat it, and this is one of these the, the tricks. 30 seconds before you add the next spoon. You uh, uh, tell me when I show off my uh, the, the meringue mixture to you, you will see why. Also, I said cast to sugar. You can use brown sugar. You must just count 30 seconds. Um, brown sugar gives a very, if you want that caramelly color, brown sugar will give that and also slightly molasses taste, although it tends to be more chewy. So you won't have that marshmallow effect that, that uh, I really want with a fat over. And also, uh, when you use brown sugar, you should you make the fat cool it in the oven, 
then decorate and immediately serve it because the brown sugar meringue tend to um, go soggy quite quite soon. And then you are also going to add an acid. Now the acid you use can either be lemon or in the case I use white, just a cheaper white vinegar, use it just a little bit, and then corn flour. You can make the flour without it, but it's the corn flour that gives your flour that beautiful, crispy, out of crust, and the billowy, cloud soft marshmallow on the inside. Now the vanilla is not just for nostalgia or because it smells like a hot kitchen. It actually takes away that metallic, uh, metallic albumin, egg over egg whitey flavor that that variety can have if you don't have a, a good uh, flavoring. Okay, I, I just want to say that I add the sugar faster than so that we can get it because we've got finished. So if this one isn't perfect, it's because I added the sugar beforehand. I'm going to blame because, her. Yeah, because we've got already just the quick, finished product. Just question. But just remember, Maybe. it's 30 seconds after each tablespoon that you add. Okay. I hope you can both hear me. I just want to ask a quick question to both of you quickly. Um, and these have come through quickly. Would the recipe work also with raw honey? That's question number one. And then another question here that's come through is when's the best time to add your food coloring to the meringue if you'd like to make a, a colorful meringue? Yeah. Okay, now in terms of you can answer the honey, I've never done it with honey. So um, I, I have my reservations in terms of the house. It's too heavy. Yeah. yeah. And it won't hold. Yeah, it's too heavy. Yeah, it, it, it won't hold the the, the, the shape that well. Um, but it's. I, I think the way to go is to experiment with because I know you can also make meringue, for example, with the the liquid of, of chickpeas. Yeah. So there's lots of new ways to. So hopefully next year we will be able to to, to show that. Yeah, the chickpeas is for the the, the vegans that don't touch eggs, so they can try with. Uh, the, the, the chickpea liquid. Yeah. Okay, now, um, just you will see these other coloring. The, the coloring while you add the, the, the flavor. Yes. Yeah. Now, I prefer to add the all the sugars in. Yeah. Once all the sugar is incorporated and you're happy that it looks nice and, and, and it starts to look glossy, I then add my corn flour mixed with the vinegar and the vanilla. I now add, then I'm going to beat it, and that is the, the, really the, the key to the success, is that you beat it, blend it, whip it for six minutes. So in that six minutes, I'm just going to take Kingwood away, but it's that six minutes that ensures the success time and time again, especially when if you want to make those huge dome uh, Pablo, the ballerina, the ballerina yeah. tutu yeah. one. You read mm -hmm. that gives you the perfect shape. And um, but with the electric mixer, with the hand mixer, it's not that bad. But ideally, a stand you could put that on your Christmas list. Ah. Eat, eat, eat. <laughs> Okay, that is going to be beaten now for six minutes. So I'm going to make the cookie dough. So I make it easier and to reduce the sound, we've made enough noise. Um, I've cream, butter, and sugar um, uh, as well, cost the sugar. 300 grams of both, 300 grams butter. 300 grams caster sugar and it just helps the sugar to start it to dissolve so I've done that now you can add your uh, just two eggs whole eggs egg white and uh, egg uh, yolk both your vanilla and your butter is soft yeah soft room butter. temperature if you if the recipe says soft butter it only means butter at room temperature because you can't clean with with um, Ice cold butter. Okay. Do you use salted or unsalted butter? 
I um, like salted butter mm. the, as it, it, yeah, because it gives taste and it breaks the sugar, mm. you know, so the cookies is not that uh, too sweet. So it's just mixing. Easy peasy. Yeah. And then it is a pinch of pinch of um, salt. And now the flour and the sifted flour is added gradually. If you use a hand beater, please start on the slow speed or else you will end up with all the flour over your, over your face. So just first mix it in on, on uh, the slow speed. You can see already this flour and then and not throw it in while you beat. You add a little bit more. This is a dancing bowl. Okay. okay, now what I'm going to do, because I usually make this also with the other boyfriend, Kenwood, because the thicker your dough is, all your dough is sticking in there. So while that Kenwood is working here, the hands are going to work here. So that because it, now it's getting ready for the moment, as you can see, it's a really very plain uh, dough. This if, is American sugar cookie. Yeah, sugar cookie. And also what you can do if you want to, the rind of um, lemon makes it also very, very nice as it tastes. So now I'm just mixing this. This is a crummy, crummy dough. Rita can just want to show this plastic bag here. Um, if it's, if the zip is open. So my hands are going to be very dirty now. So it's a crummy, crumbly dough. Don't worry. When you roll it out, it will um, mix the ingredients as well. So, and if you use the Kenwood, use the K, um, the K, beater, yeah. K beater and not the whisk beater. Because um, if you work with the dough, the dough just stick to the to the uh, wires and then it's a struggle to get it out. You can use it, but it's it's not really efficient. But okay. this doesn't have any of the fuss of making pastry dough with cold hands no, and, and all that. The because you going this dough is going to in the, be in the fridge for one hour. But you don't have to wait. I made it extra for <laughs> that we can use later. Mm, already started that cookie dough. Yeah. Okay. okay, can you Is open it something that? that kids can do? Can yeah, of part? course, yes. And now it goes into a plastic bag. You can use uh, clean wrap as well uh, to cover your dough and in the fridge for one at least one hour. So you have to it down no, the, the, the flatter it is, the quicker, the, the quicker and the base it will cool down. There you are. Sure, and this will make, this amount will make one tree or... And you'll have some leaves over, and I've got an idea to make, for the leftovers, you can make nice it's extra good. cookies. Um, I'm put some holes in some so that you can uh, put it even as Christmas decorations. So that was the, what I did with the leftover dough when I made this tree. Yeah. Okay. Your six minutes is still going there. I'm just going to clean up here because we don't want butter. Okay, which am I? Well, um, it's very close to, 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 to be ready, the meringue. Just something on the guide that you're going to use for uh, piping the meringue is use baking powder, uh, baking paper, not wax paper, baking paper, and then you draw a circle. I for, for this the wreath I use 22 centimeter diameter. If you want, you can make a 24 centimeter one with a, a wider hole in the middle to have it even more reach like. 
a suggestion if you have a problem with the baking powder curling forming these curly sides it's really irritating but also when you scoop out the meringue it, everything becomes it gets dirty so draw your circle on the curly side then you turn it round so your pen marks are at the bottom and right on the on the baking tin so now also the curly sides are also um, on a line flat then also to have this not move around in the plate you're going to dab a bit of the meringue mixture just in the in, in the center under the paper and that helps to to stick it onto the plate that it stays it doesn't move around the same advice is when you start decorating the wreath and you already have your whipped cream to add also before you put your um, the wreath on your presentation platter just dab a bit of your uh, whipped cream on at the base of the meringue as well that helps that prevents it from sliding around to me my gut says it's it's, it's going to be yeah, fabulous thank you Ian. Ja, net vir ons die eier, die Pablo was so, het is in geklit, so, baie dankie Ian, dat ons dan nie nie die geraas die heel tyd hier achter julle het nie. Is daar enige vraag, het die dag so pak, enige vraag in tussen? Guys, just any questions, any questions? Any questions? Okay. There you are. I just want to show off. Isn't this absolutely beautiful? And this color is called pearl white meringue. And it's shiny and it's stiff and it, mm, it tastes of, of so much promise. But the, see, the, the real thing is that it's going to keep its shape. Um, not only while it bakes, but also as it stands, it's going to not lose any volume. Okay. Now, I'll just get this off for me, please. Now with the six eggs and about 350 grams of sugar, you can make two wreaths or one really extra large family size one. Okay. It's strange how there are these little memories built into this ritual of of pavlova um my mom is no longer with us but i use her beautiful old vintage spoons to to form the wreath <laughs> so this is bigger than just an ordinary tablespoon <laughs> Deline, why don't you just put a dab of the meringue at the bottom To keep the paper down. Like, yeah, just to keep the paper down. That's a nice thing. Yeah, so it stops. Yeah. Okay, so. What I'm doing now is just to form what the French call quenelles. It, it has a lovely egg shape and it neatens the sides a bit, but you, do, you can work rough at this stage. So I'm just using my guide, the paper mark. I place the meringue dollop right on the, the one side, right, right on the edge. Again, let's just neaten that up. But the one wreath I made, I used, uh, I was more a perfectionist, which is not really my nature, Mondelian's. Um, so I wanted to please her. And then I left <laughs> with a little piece, a little demacar one, like a, someone that you, Mess up their the hair, it looks like that. Uh, does this make two or this volume make it uh, this one? This volume makes two small oh, ones okay. and, and one huge one. The, the big one is probably you can easily serve 12, oh, 14 people, yeah. especially with the, the toppings, with yeah. the cream and the fruits and everything on top. Yeah, yum, yum, but yum. It's, it's really if you follow a different method. I can promise you the six egg whites won't make two wreaths. It's because of the, the method that we use for, for beating and yeah, for yeah, whipping it, yeah. that it actually forms this volume. Yeah. 
room temperature eggs fresh eggs yeah. patience again which is a virtue for me it's not something that comes naturally yes. you can get a very good result with an electric heater i'm just going to mix the quinoa and then you can put it down to okay to okay. help the process you make the canal i make another canal <laughs> in the uh, middle ages when they discovered meringue they didn't have beaters not even the old you hand can, ones you can so they used bunches of twigs and it took them about four to five hours to to beat it to eggs to meringue stage to make just a plain ordinary cake so there's some really ad good ad advantages of living in the year 2020 and if you know with this left over we can you can make smaller meringues Absolutely. and then even put it on top of the because there's enough for for uh yeah, maybe can, can, can yeah. yes, because we've got it now and then these are real meringue pieces. Yeah, and I know the volume is about three times. When, yeah. when, when it is in, after it's baked, it's about three times this. So don't go too large because you must keep in mind that you've got uh, must leave space for, 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 for it rising out. Perfect. This we've got some. This is very rough, but we don't want to, to, to waste too much time. And you know what to do now. Just one thing when exactly the same way I used just an, a wreath form. This is actually also the process that you use to make the dough. So you will just um, use larger scoops and then with your spoon um, make these oh, yeah. movements so that you have that beautiful dough shape. And when you make a pavlova, just a tip, the traditional way is to have the folds on the side, and that resembles the ballet tutu of Anna Pavlova, the, the um, ballet dancer after Wood Pavlova's name. This goes into the oven. I set the oven, I preheat the oven to 150 degrees. But please just ask the whole family to remind you to turn it down to 120, 130 when you put this in. At 150, it will just go all brittle and brown, it will go brown yeah. and unattractive and it you want that dry outside yeah, yeah, yeah. and the the marshmallow on the inside so an hour and then to prevent it from cracking and also when you you know where you get that meringue where the outside is is, is the crust but then the the inside is totally dry yeah. and that um letting it cool down in the oven um, also prevents that oh, so it dries it out in the dries oven it out, yeah and they sometimes they call it the forgotten cake because you can just keep leave it in the oven and forget about it once you've turned it off. Okay, you are at 150 now. Now you must put it on. 120. 120. Oh, okay. And for one hour. One hour for you. Okay. That's right. Okay. Okay. No, you just when you finish, will you bring me the dough? Then I can roll out the the Christmas tree. Yeah. Well, a very old fashioned Okay. Now for the dough, I've just made half the the amount just to save time so that we don't. You got the idea, and I've already got some that is already baked. And 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 uh, to make it easier, this is a set of ten ten stars. But if you don't, if you can't get this, then you can use. But because I've got this for ages, but the baking uh, special speciality shops and at home they usually have um, this as well. So what you do is, uh, if you don't have this, is you can take a star on the internet and just increase the size with 10 percent every time and then you've got a template that you can work with you put that on cardboard and then unfortunately you have to cut each one out and then also you'll have to use a sharp knife to cut the 
the, um, from the where this is just press and go, which is quite easy. And that really makes it handmade if you make your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So just it's a very stiff dough, and the reason for that is you don't want the the dough to run while it's baking. Because if it runs, you end up with different sizes. You want that to get that perfect tower. So it is a, a, it's a, a stiff dough in comparison with, with others. Uh, cookie dough is usually a, a more a stiff dough. So they don't spread, but they don't rise too much either. You, no, you don't want usually in biscuits, there's no um, leavening, leavening agents, baking powder, or anything like that. Because, um, that's the nature of it. that is what makes it a biscuit is that you just flour also what i prefer to do is just to put some flour on my rolling pin and now easy peasy you'll see it is a bit crumbly and this is only half the amount now i'm just going to do okay then I'm just going to get this just to show you. The bottom star, the bottom star is quite big. So don't make the dough roll it out too thin because then it gets difficult to handle. So just make it, and also the thicker you make it, the higher your, your tree will end up. And then just the thicker, if you make it thicker, just the baking time obviously will also be longer okay then uh, biscuits usually bake 10 minutes that thickness will go up to 16 17 minutes okay at 180. so although the dough is stiff it's not a, a dough that struggles to roll out you can see this is a quite light uh, rolling pin and it works fine so i'm just going to do a few stars you've got the idea but the important thing is if you look at this you, it's difficult to see but it's actually two of the same size two of the same size two of the same size if you use only one you end up with a pyramid and not a yeah. tree and the leaves so, are yeah so, so yeah so uh, that we will do it when we build it up so it's two of every size. So it's two of the large star, two of every one. The only one that is separate is the smallest one because that is the one that goes on top. So basically here are 18 layers. So it's two of this. This one? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Two of Thank you. All in all, in terms of the process for planning purposes, is this something that ideally you will make beforehand? You can do today. Because it's it's only so long you can make it a week before mm. the time. It's so easy. Now you can see how easy it is to handle this dough. The only thing is, obviously, if you use the last, the large star, it will then you'll have to use an egg lifter to handle it, and. So there's no stretching. You keep the points nice and everything. If you, and I put it here on a baking tray covered with um, baking paper. No, but uh, nothing needs because there's enough shortening in the biscuits. The butter is enough to make it that it doesn't stick to the paper. So as you can see, it's easy. And then it's two of each size. I've only made three there, unfortunately, but that's no problem. Something that I always wanted to know, um, and, and, and that happens when I press out scone. Yeah. I have this urge to wriggle the cutter. Should, should you, is there a way that you can prevent the dough sticking to the cutter? You can dip it in flour, like that, yeah. and then it should be, because yeah. I've made it so much, I know this doesn't stick, but yeah. this one, is the, the tiny one. Okay. So what I do is I use I'm going to use this scissor because it's at hand. I just use a toothpick and just at the corners there, and you can see there already it comes out. So this is the only one that you might have a problem getting out. The rest is easy. They come out quite easy. Okay. I think you've got the idea. Any questions at this stage?
So it's two of each size. Okay, and then it goes in the oven. As I said, if it's thick, this thickness will go 12 minutes. Um, so that is fine. Okay, let me just clean up here, you ready? Okay. Um, now, you know, food lovers market is, is learn, and, and I fell in love with them years ago with the wonderful fresh produce. So I bought all the berries that I needed, the most delicious juicy cherries, beautiful strawberries for this pavlova because it's a weed and I want it elegant and refined. I chose the smaller strawberries, not those, the big giants, which is perfect for, for other uses. Obviously raspberries are also um, beautiful on this, but simply because I wanted to stick to a budget, I um, more affordable strawberries and then the, the cherries for, for extra luxury. And obviously, um, again, as I said, you can go and buy your meringue casing and, and follow the direction for, for the decoration. But you can also, once you add food lovers, you can buy bread. I mean, mince mm. pies, the fruit cakes, the tarts. So I would suggest, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make for Christmas Day, I'm going to make my speciality, the pavlova. Mm. I'm going to have Delian's cookie um, a tree. And then I'm going to buy in some of the ready-made, beautiful baked goods from food lovers. And the gammon is to die for. Shopping. Yeah. I made two, and this is, I don't know whether you're going to see this, but Ian, why don't you just show? This is the one, the more refined one. It's quite heavy. It's the refined one where, I don't know if you can see the, the individual ones are more smooth. And you can also actually tie a golden ribbon or a ribbon to a festive ribbon to this and actually hang that up or it will last for an hour or two. Um, but the kids will probably start breaking pieces off. It's going to get to the pool. I mean, not that you need to be advised on how to whip cream, but just a tip is that the cream must be cold. Ideally, you, if you want to speed up the process, um, a, a cold beater as well. So don't take it straight out of the dishwasher and then start whipping. You want it nice and cold. I didn't sweeten the cream at all because, I mean, this is all sweet yeah. goodness already. So then we're going to decorate the, the Dimacar one. Well, they found it very good to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, any one of those. Yeah. 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 I like the height of this one, so that's why, you know, the stand with yeah. this high and I love it. And then yeah. if you have some leftover berries or berries that are past their prime, you might have that at the back of the fridge, use that to make a puree. And what you can do is you can actually add some of that puree to the cream just give it a few stirs to get that marble effect. So you can use that also to, to decorate. So blobs of cream. You can also go the healthier route. It's a bit hypocritical with all the sugar, but you can use um, mascarpone, actually a half, half, half cream of mascarpone. And um, I personally don't like yogurt that much unless it's really a very lovely thick creamy yogurt and also you can mix that too with some mascarpone. Now my garden, I was a bit lazy during lockdown, I should have done some gardening, but uh, normally I have more of an array of, of edible flowers so uh, I would, and, and I have organic rose, little small little rose buds that I decorated it with in the past. Today I'm going to stick to um, just the, the beauty of the berries. Keep some whole and some you half. And just because it's so pretty, I didn't remove the um, 
the leaves. Yeah, the, the green crumbs. leaves, that the Christmas yeah. effect, the green and the red. You can yeah. take it off, it's pretty irritating to bite onto it. But um, then you can add uh, mint leaves yeah. or even tiny basil leaves, which also is quite a surprising effect. And don't be too neat. You can actually drop a few on the side. And, and try, if you drop some on the side, try and keep it together and not to at my car, right? And now, now what you, if you have gold leaf for for that festive gold and glitter? Oh, it already looks beautiful yeah. every day. Yummy, yummy. Mm. How long before the time can you put on the cream? Okay, if you're going to leave it outside, yeah, yeah. two hours in a cool place, okay. but up to four hours in the fridge. Oh. But after that, it goes, it's it, was, it yeah. will start collapsing. But it's still longer yeah, than Yeah, and, and if it the leftovers, just mix it all together, put it in the freezer, and you have a, an instant frozen dessert. So nothing has to go, although it will be finished. It will be yeah, eaten. Yeah, and I think I can really close on stop. Now, the friends, the French have a name for these. I just call it silver bolikis. Um, I'm going to use silver with a tinge of pink. And here and there, not too many because they are for the older people at the table. <laughs> They might interfere with the venture. But it gives a nice festive, uh, festive uh, yeah, look. It yeah. is, but just not too many. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Don't overdo it. And it, yeah. it really it, it gives a wonderful effect. That yeah, is, I would say, yeah, gold leaf is beautiful and it's, yeah. it, it sounds expensive, but it's it's not yeah. really. You know, just. Okay, I think time is our enemy now. Oh, it, you know, it's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. I must make a, I take a picture because yeah. it's so nice. Oh, okay. I'll take the I'm not going to move this out of the way because it's too beautiful. Uh, just keep it there. She's such a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not a good enough friend. You know, I realize I bought you these, but it doesn't have a Flat enough sin. I've already the value. It's a, it runs around. I'm, I must do better shopping next time. Okay, this is the. I've already do the beating. So what I'm doing now is royal icing, and all it is is an egg white, lightly beaten, it's foamy, uncle foamy, and then you add your icing sugar, and it's very runny like that. But the uh, wonderful thing about royal icing is it dries very quickly. So, Rita, I've already made the rest of the other tree just like that, and then just a nice, like a double, yeah, a nice hint. You can take the ordinary plastic bag as to use as a as a as a piping bag. This is a plastic piping bag, but you can use, and then you just use the corner of your um, plastic bag for, for, for piping. I can so, use those banky pieces. I know, the small ones, ones, yeah. You can also make a piping bag by using baking paper, but I've got this now, so it's easy. Why would I struggle with that? I'm just going to use just that. a question, because you use raw cake, yeah. and raw egg white is, in, in certain cases, not recommended for the very young, for the elderly or for people that is infirm and uh, sick. So what can you use then instead water. of water? water. Um, one egg white is about 25 milliliters. Mm -hmm. The egg is about 45, a small egg. So you can put, so the amount of water, water is about 40, uh, uh, 25. Uh, for this, this is a, you can see icing sugar. This is a cup of icing sugar. Can you see how how little you end up with when you mix in, in fluids into, but you get quite far with only a cup. So what I do is, Rita, you're going to dot the, the, mm. the, 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 mm. the star points, but just a small hole in the beginning. So what I do is, if you're going to give it to somebody and you're going to travel, 
this okay you going to travel in the car this is going to move run around so what i do is i start with a nice dollop of the so now i'm going to do the edges okay now what i'm going to say i've only used a quarter of the amount of the recipe but the full amount is it snowed a lot at your place we've only got a little bit of snow if it snowed a lot you can fill in the whole area if you want to it's up to you and then you can put more uh, finger imagings so that is just the idea okay you read up on each corner and then also you can you That's can right. um, the americans with their with their white christmas they actually their trees they drip the loss the leftovers they actually drip from the the edges so that yeah, we can do it, do it on this one okay so now mm -hmm. i just put a a block thing uh, and you put on now this one goes with the inner sides of the star it's not the points over over on each other so it goes in like that the, okay, yeah. yeah and now we do the this one okay at the points whether we can do that afterwards as well if we need to so that is just a room uh, just 10 minutes left and mm -hmm. how are we at time yeah we got uh, just over 10 minutes left ladies thank you very oh, much yeah. Okay. Yeah. so and now this goes on every time alternate the star and can you see how easy it is it's just a biscuit and now you make it fancy with some royal icing and what i love is that there's no perfection it's, no. it's dripping off because it's snow it's, it's, it's snow, snow. It's, that is the, and the I reason i think that is very forgiven especially this is the type of thing that you really want to to include people that are not used to baking no. that doesn't have the people those that don't have the confidence or kids to give them confidence to okay so to now this is so now i've already piped this just to save time now we're just going to bolt and it's our next size as you see it's two of the same size two of the next size did you plan it to be off center on the plate now? yes well it's it, it's still wet enough for me to move it right. <laughs> thanks okay so it just goes off in at the centers next size and as you can see this this i've made this layers quite thick so i end up with a nice high tree and the dough is enough for you to um to make um and you can go thinner or, or thicker. Christmas colors with it, the greens and, yeah, and the other ones. Some other yeah. bubbles as well. And then also you can decorate your little last, this last star with patterns. Yeah. And then also you can actually wrap this, the your top star with uh, the gold leaf, which no, makes no. it quite pretty. And it's edible. Can you see how easy is this? Oh. I, well, I, I still prefer that you make it and give it to me as a okay, gift. Yeah. yeah, but you've got other baking to do before, and you so have to make the, the, the bubble. I now realize after all these years how easy it is for you to make it. I was also uh -oh, always uh -oh, so uh -oh. impressed. <laughs> that was okay, and here goes the top. For really, for, okay, how do you prevent it that it fall over? Is it just it's you just can you can at base. this stage yeah. you can move it so now i'm going to show you i've got some leftover but remember you've made extra from the leftover dough so you still have to to finish those off now you can go wild this there was a snowstorm you want it a little bit more snowy just to give you the idea play make it make it your own and now because it's you see there you can make it your own that gives you a, a, a good idea you can also color the way i see you know you can use red you can use green you can make each layer a different color if you want to because you you don't need only to use stars the stars gives a nice tree effect but you can do oh, oh, you could smell, smell fresh mint. mint 
you can use um, like a gingerbread man mm. in different sizes because that's also available. Um, but this, this. That's a question of aesthetics. Yeah. We want what do you want? We want you know the three. Yeah. Like it to go yeah. with the yeah. neutral. Yeah. yeah. But I won't say if you if you don't get a, a, the star shapes. As I say, you can these other shapes as well, like the gingerbread man. These um, a, a Father Christmas uh, molds as well. And then you can you can build your own stack. Then it's just not a tree. Okay. And that and is that. Yeah, and if we rehearsed it before, and we would have um, spun Rudolph the Red Rose and Arania, so just I can't see the map. I can't either. So we just have to say thank you and goodbye. And <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you to the both of you. You were incredible. The Leon, Arida, Arida, thank you so much. I think if anyone's got any questions besides the fact that where do you stay? We're we coming over to come eat Pavlova. We're we going to come, uh, come, are we dying to come? I'm dying to get into that kitchen and be there with you right now. Thank you very much uh, for I that amazing I've enjoyed it very much, but the only yeah. thing is that Irida didn't give me any wine and I saw the people <laughs> having a fun time there in the background and I am dry now. Yeah. Work and then play. Bye, <laughs> everyone. Thank questions anybody i've got a question are you guys going to start your own tv show soon hey Scook, in you know, a, a, before out, um, your time obviously you're too young there was this wonderful program british program called two fat ladies and then well, I, I like I was, yeah. with a with a motorbike yeah. and a sidecar and we said what is the caravel what is those we began to go with a with a kind of bell and began to tra travel the country without TV show. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, no two fat ladies because we are both very focused on um, yeah, a, a, a living a healthy life through uh, the, this whole Corona experience. But I hope you fall in love with your kitchen all over again this um, Christmas period. Thank you. Any, Thank you. Any more questions? They can no. ask other questions as well. Anything about baking? Yeah. I didn't, that I didn't have any questions, but I did make a gingerbread man. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. It didn't come out too beautiful, but I will definitely take the tips and try and make it better. Wonderful. Yeah, and that reward of the, 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 the aromas and the smells of a Christmas kitchen when you make gingerbread, it doesn't have to be a success, just the, the way that it's the ambiance. The ambiance. <laughs> I just want to say if any of you do the Christmas tree or the pavlova, please, please hashtag Hayscook. Um, okay. or just tag the handle because I, I think Irida and Dalian, you'd love to see what everybody um, obviously yeah. yes or other shapes you know that will be lovely to see that great fabulous yes will you spot if I've bought a food lovers market meringue will you spot that mm. probably because it's going to be probably a bit more, more perfect yeah, where yeah. The, the, we didn't try and and give it a professional edge but i think your bakers have that professional mm -hmm. attitude yeah. so um i think it, it it will be a masterpiece that they can buy at the shop now they do just a question from uh, rohana said to make a chewy meringue instead of a crispy one is it the same recipe start with using brown sugar but make a, a, a cost of the brown sugar so what you do is you just put in your liquidizer to to, to, to blend it but you have to just serve it before you add it to the to the eggs and that will give you the the chewy effect now another thing is also is um if you don't dry it in the oven so when this is after the hour is done if you will just switch off the oven so yeah. the the meringue is drying out completely so the sooner you take it out the softer it will be yeah, inside yeah. as well but then it will also go soggy and quick Quicker. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so trust yeah. both methods, yeah. brown sugar, and then um, don't dry it out that long. Yellow was done fantastic. Buyer, buyer, buyer. That's my best of for the best of season and once by the year, take buyer. Yellow, look, for Amal, as we let it cover till I'm on the spot in Yellow family. Buyer, thank you. Happy baby. 
at Hayscock. Uh, please give them a good follow on social for the very best. Thank you very much for using the very freshest ingredients from Food Lovers Market. Hashtag Food Lovers Workshop continues. Guys, have a great lunch. We'll catch you again for those of you joining us at 2 o'clock. And then uh, a little bit. And ladies, I wish you could join us. We've got wine and gin oh. and all of that still to come. Oh. Going to have dessert for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh,